trip, huh? Sunny loves you. Yeah, he does. All right, Johnny, so you're born and raised, oh, look, he does. You're born and raised in Los Angeles. East. East Los Angeles. So tell me, where are you living right now? How are you, how are you surviving? Well, I get my social security. Mm -hmm. uh, East LA is where I'm from. And uh, I, I have a lot of experience there. A lot of people that loved me. Had but you're not able to afford rent right now with the social security or what's happening? No, no I'm only getting about 1100. And, uh, but I worked hard for that. Where are you sleeping at nighttime? The majority of the time on the beach. I've been homeless for over a year. That has been very enlightening in regards to survival on the streets. Uh, how enlightening? Well, most people can't comprehend the struggle and the uh, gosh, the poverty, not just financially, but education-wise. Uh, so have you ever been homeless before? Or never. Did you ever picture yourself in this position? Never. <laughs> Heck no. Somebody would have told me that I would be homeless, I'd laugh at it. Do you have a uh, family? One son. Uh, and I planned him. That's the interesting thing about that part of the story. But um, I, I planned him the day, um, the last time I was with his mother. I said, she deserves my son. And we were together for three years. And I decided to let her get pregnant. Does your, does your son know that you're living yeah. at the beach right now? No, he doesn't. Why don't you reach out to him? I expected more today uh, of my accomplishments. I have uh, lots of gifts and talents, and yet I haven't been able to, I think it, it, the God that I call God <laughs> uh, wants me to, to see things um, before I, I make those commitments. I understand it's hard, you know, a lot of ego to make that call. Yes, it is. How old is your son? He's 39, going to be 40. And where does your son live? East Los Angeles, I believe. And do you have his number? you have his email? No, but he came looking for me. I'm sure he loves you. I wish that, you know, I mean, I wouldn't doubt it if he disliked the fact that I never reached out to him. Why um, did you never reach out to him? Well, his mother told me that, that he wasn't mine. And yeah, that, that hit that ego button really quick and hard and so I think I subconsciously just blocked it out because I was working a lot and then I got married and that only lasted five years. What did you do when you had a job? I worked my butt off. I'm sure you did. What was it? I, I, <laughs> okay I'm certified in cooking, baking, building maintenance, child development. I went to medical assistant school. What's your favorite dish to cook? I love Italian and Mexican. Uh, I'll, I'll mix either or. Uh, I make pesto better than anybody, I think. Oh, can you tell me your secret recipe for pesto? It's not a secret recipe. God didn't keep it a secret to himself. He gave it to me. <laughs> so I was literally just looking up pesto <laughs> recipes last night. Are you serious? Yes. Okay, well, it's 50% cilantro, 50% basil. Okay. With a lot more, uh, I would say, well, garlic, uh, Parmesan cheese, white pepper, a little bit. You know, I like the spicy side of things. Not too spicy, just enough to, and uh, just to be able to touch the palate. The original <laughs> uh, recipe just includes nothing but basil. Okay. And uh, the cilantro has something of a, it adds something of a twist on the Mexican side of things. I mean, a lot of people have actually uh, complimented on my cooking. When was the last time that you were able to cook a meal like pesto or, or something like that? Oh man, it's been a couple of years, a few years. Because that, that takes, you know, a good kitchen with all the materials, all the ingredients. <laughs> so what, what did you eat yesterday? What did you make yourself? Uh, what did you buy yourself? A couple of sandwiches. Uh, I love chocolate, so I drink at least half a gallon of chocolate a day. Chocolate milk? Yes. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, chocolate has been a... A blessing for me. So Johnny, how would you describe yourself? Uh, hard to understand I guess because uh, my life isn't normal. My birthday's on Halloween. I'm a professing Christian. Um, 
it's totally contrast right there. I'm from East LA. My dad's younger brother, brother put the first set of hydraulics in the first low ride in the first car club. So what car club was that? The Imperials. Amazing. I'm a people person. I love people. Um, try to bring out the, the most I can in them just by being myself. I don't like telling nobody what to do, when to do it, how to do it. You know, just share my experiences on what I did under extreme circumstances and, and uh, just uh, try to exercise patience before I became one. If you could have anything right now, what would that be? Um, to expedite uh, success so I can share it with my son. Amazing. You think so? Yeah. I think it's just a fatherly desire. <laughs> you miss your son. Yeah, and then that was never part of his life, and that's the sad part. It's never too late. No, heck no. That's why I'm not. I'm not quitting. That's why I'm sober. Uh, I let's grew, let's I, talk about that. Were you? What do you mean? That's why you're sober. What happened? <clears throat> well, me and a few cousins, we called ourselves the Garbage Pail Crew. Okay. We did everything and anything, mm -hmm. all the way to sniffing glass. Glass. I mean, not glass. Gas. Mm -hmm. Gasoline. That was the stupidest thing we ever did. We all agreed to it. <laughs> My parents were alcoholics. Mm -hmm. My dad was an extreme introvert. My mom was the total opposite. Uh, although uh, she had a lot of bitterness from her past, she couldn't raise her own children. I have two brothers and one sister. I should have had two more brothers, but uh, actually three. One of them. Uh, He's gone, and the other two, one was a miscarriage and uh, a crib death. When you're raised in the environment of East Los Angeles, the gang banging, the violence, let's put it this way, my first job, my first day at a job where I got hired by the state of California as a gang consultant to represent the gang that I ran in, that was amazing because I never experienced anything so extreme, although I have known that I've been a leader in my world, uh, in my life, that I, I mean, I've had a pastor at this one church up north tell me, John, I know nobody else can tell you what to do, but as long as you don't talk back to me and do everything I tell you, you're good to go. <laughs> so, um, he basically told me that I was doing right, and, and um, <clears throat> I never wanted it intimidate anybody or, or threaten anybody. I was, you know what they call me, Johnny Kid. Johnny Kid? At this, at this age, they're still calling me Kid. And I'm trying, get away from that kid. I'm growing up now, I'm old enough. So you were helping people get out of gangs, survive gangs? Find themselves. And what was your key takeaway that you would tell people in finding themselves? Try, try, try to learn how to communicate with uh, the powers that be. Beautiful. Because uh, there's no way I could take credit for my successes. And I have succeeded in life, uh, a few things. What are your success things? Let's, let's hear them one more time. Well, cooking, baking, building maintenance, and child development. And why did I take child development? Because I wanted to grow up one day and be a good dad. You know? Um, I was married for five years and I raised two beautiful girls. Uh, being that I'm from East LA, I, I accumulated 25 convictions with six felonies. You did? Yes, I did. While you were not sober? While I was not sober, right. What, what were those things? Oh, gang, gang activities, drug possession, no robberies, no burglaries, no assaults. So you didn't hurt anyone? No. And when you're in the middle of war, mm -hmm. In, in the neighborhood. I saw a lot of things and, and uh, wished that I wasn't there. I had older cousins and, uh, well, those older cousins are all dead. I'm the only one alive. They're calling me last of the Mohicans. And I said, no, no, I was gone for 25 years. It ain't gonna happen. I'm not gonna be responsible for your dummies, for you dummies killing yourself. What but was that moment? Cause you were an active part of the gangs in East LA you, do you remember what got you out of it? God. I have to say God. Because um, 
I, I can't take credit for my position in life right now being tranquil, uh, looking for peace, trying to help people regardless of my circumstances. Um, you know, every human being is a different thumbprint. You got different character. And it's just learning how to be patient with yourself, you know, to maybe help prevent other people from becoming patients. Have you been to prison? Yeah. How long were you in prison for? Uh, we'll say approximately 13 to 15 years off and on. Wow. And how long ago? Oh, that was years, years, many years ago. Yeah. Uh, in, in prison, were you sober? No. It's too easy to get loaded in there. In fact, a lot of people die in there from getting loaded all the time. Wow. I, uh, I minimized all that, stopped it, and um, started going back to school. What makes me so special when I actually felt like, uh, uh, I guess, a pincushion in a way, because uh, my mom would always beat the heck out of me as a child, and my cousins would beat the heck out of me when I was in the streets. So how did you get out of the gangs? How, did they let you go? Well, no, no. When I was born and raised in it, uh, you can't say you got jumped in. And so nobody could jump me out. What is your experience with people? Just LA people walking by, talking to you, ignoring you? Most I mean, people are intimidated by my looks. Because you're tall? Tall and very serious in my thoughts. But that doesn't mean I'm angry. I've had people say, what are you, what are you mad at, Johnny? Just thinking. <laughs> I grew up in the mountains too, but I was mm -hmm. doing time at 13 years old. Uh, you were doing time at 13 years old? <laughs> yes. You mean you were in juvie? I was in juvenile camp. Oh wow. Right up there by Mount Baldy. You can see the top of it. it was so high that um, it was a blessing in disguise. I, 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 I tell people that you can find gold in poop. <laughs> and uh, Mount Baldy and that environment was the gold. You know, I, I saw that there's another world, another way of life up in the mountains, opposed to down in the city, it was peaceful. So every time I get an opportunity, I'll find a good lake or a river or ocean. You told me that you've been sober for a year and you've also been homeless for a year. So did something happen where you my brother stole the house from my dad when he had a stroke. Okay. And then you got out. kicked out? I got kicked out. The cops had to come in and escort me out. And when they escorted me out, I looked at my dad and my brother and I said, all you had to do was ask me. You didn't have to call no cop. Do you have a plan? I know you... No, my, my, my plan yes. is to try and submit to the spirit, the spirits of God because... Uh, He's shown me that my planning doesn't work. I could, but uh, there's a force in this, this entire universe that there's no way I'm going to try and fight it. And uh, the times I did, I ended up in prison. If you believe in God and people guiding you to places, I feel so honored that you came up and talked to me because this really is a passion of mine talking to people like you. I find you to be so special and you said that you are different and I acknowledge that in you and you. you seem like an amazing person and you have a difficult past but there's so much for you to share Not with other people <laughs> and I hope that you know you contact your son because oh I intend on doing that yeah it's just a matter of making sure that you know I don't know what to make sure of. I, I just, like I said. Time I, is now. Yes, it is. Let the ego go. Okay, you're right. <laughs> I don't you know. See, I was hard looking at you to say it's right. You were right. Well, I'm going to come back here and, you know, hopefully talk to your son. Let's see what happens. You know what? Somehow or another, give me a, give me an email address or something. And let me know what happens. Yeah. I'll be for rooting sure. for you. If he, if he shuts you out. He won't shut me out. Okay, well there you go. Whatever happens he then. He went looking for me. Okay, so then let's do this.